and you can just see on the inscription down here Marjorie McCall lived once buried twice hi guys welcome back to the channel GV here so on this location here today we are in a place called Shankill Cemetery here in Lurgan County Armagh um, we're going to go walk around here and look at some interesting old graves there's also a mausoleum just here to my right um, and we're going to talk about a very very strange story and a woman who's buried here who lived once and was buried twice So guys, we're here in Shankill, the old cemetery, and we can just see the mausoleum on top of the the hillside there. That's the Brownlow Mausoleum, who were a very well-known, wealthy family in the area, owned lots of land here as well. Um, we'll go up and have a look at that right now and read the inscription that's on it. So that's the big mausoleum here. A huge top on it there. And the doors look actually new looking on it. So we'll read the inscription that's overhead. So it says the remains of the family of the Brownlow, not ignoble from its foundations rest here. Elizabeth of the most noble family of Abercorn, the illustrious widow of William who died in 1737, took care to build this tomb as a monument of her affection. So that's just a bit of information there of the Brownlow mausoleum and there's just another bit right in here this vault was renovated in the year 1969 or 59 i think by the right honorable william george edward fourth baron of lurgan in grateful memory of his dear aunt the honorable annette brownlow the youngest daughter of charles so um interesting bit of history there the wind is picking up here a lot today so we'll walk around and read some of these interesting ones and I'll tell you a bit of story about Marjorie McCall and her grave that we'll go and visit so the story about Marjorie McCall is she had a fever to presume that the time she passed away, she had the wake in the house. All the family were there, her husband. Um, she was brought to this old cemetery here and was buried. So later on that evening, two grave robbers came in here. They got word of somebody at the wake, I presume told them. She was wearing a very expensive ring on her finger. So these grave robbers came in here a couple of hours after her being buried, dug her grave up and tried to take the ring off her finger. So failing to do so, um, they had to cut her finger off to get the ring. And while they were cutting her finger off to take the ring away, Marjorie awoke in her coffin. Of course the two grave robbers ran with the fright, ran out of the, the cemetery and uh, Marjorie awoke, came up out of her grave, walked all the way back home 
and back to her husband's house where she proceeded to knock on the door. The husband hearing the knock on the door said to his children, if I hadn't buried your mother today, he said, I could swear that was her knock on the door. And to his surprise, he opened the door and his wife Marjorie was standing there with a bloody hand. They say he died on the spot with fright. He collapsed, died of shock. And uh, he was buried in the grave that Marjorie came out of where they thought she was dead. He was buried that evening. And uh, so Marjorie went on to live for a number of years more in life. I think she was 53 or 53, 53 or four years old um, of the time of her death. And she's buried here. So we'll go and visit her grave and read the inscription that's on it. So she's well known around here, the famous Marjorie McCall, they say the woman who lived once and was buried twice. This is a really nice one here with the, the route iron railing. And this is Thomas Armstrong Jr. who died in 1906, age 60. And I think at one time or another, there was something in the middle of the monument there. Not quite sure would that have been a, an inscription of some sort in there. So let's go guys and I'll show you her grave first because I won't, don't want to leave you waiting after telling you the story. So we'll go and visit Marjorie's final resting place and we hope she's resting. And you know, back in them days, people would have been in a coma. Doctors didn't have the technology that we'd have today, you know, to pronounce someone dead. Um, they would have presumed she was dead and buried her. So if those grave robbers, when you think about it, hadn't come to dig her grave looking for, for valuables, it wouldn't have been very nice to wake up in a coffin, alive, and not able to get out. So I think it's somewhere over this direction her grave is. Marjorie. So there's people cleaning here today cleaning some graves and tending to the graves. So this is the famous grave here. Marjorie McCall. And you can just see on the inscription down here. Marjorie McCall lived once, buried twice. And uh, you can vaguely see a name on it there. I think it's John, which will be her husband, John McCall. And they say her husband was a surgeon. He was a surgeon. And she didn't live too far from here. I think it was Church, Church Lane she lived. So she would have walked from this cemetery back to her husband's to knock on the door after he buried her. What a shock to get. An interesting one, guys. Let me know what you think in the comments below of this story. It is possible. And just behind the brown low mausoleum, we have this Wonderful looking headstone here. Stonework. 
looks like a family crest you can see some maybe lines on it there and uh, I do see a name on it here or oh, is it Riley Jane Riley who died in December and I don't see a year on it but it is a beautiful headstone amazing and that is of course the back of the Brownlow mausoleum there's your vent at the very very top So there's a number of old graves here as well, guys, in the old cemetery um, from the 1600s. This is just one example here. Um, John Clark, who died March 1697. And we have an Edward Clark, who died January 1705. But just down the very bottom there, you can see that face. Look at that. Amazing to see, isn't it? Sixteen hundreds grave. And um I believe there's four here altogether from the sixteen hundreds. This is another one. So here we have John Walker who died in sixteen ninety six. And there's a bit of a writing on it there. It's kind of hard to see. But that is 1696. Another one. And uh, there's actually an old 1600s one that's joined onto a more modern looking headstone here. And we can see on this Susanna Ogle his wife who died in April the 18th 1690 amazing so there's people doing some work here today cleaning the graves doing a super job to keep this history Hello. Let we go down this way. You're doing a super job. Thank you very much. Keeping it clean. back on this path and we come around this way and um, look at this one here this is a kind of a, a marble or granite looking one here in our blessed style and this is a, an effectual remembrance of Holt Montgomery Hewitt who died the 7th of May 1890 age 41 so that's the Hewitt family. And uh, there's that brown no mausoleum. Very, very elaborate. So I'll take you back over and read some more of the older ones down this section. Beautiful grave or cemetery should say here well kept talking to a couple of the men who work here today very nice very friendly um, give me a little bit of information about the area and stuff which is always helpful so I believe this is a vault here we can see there's a chest tomb inside and uh, a small kind of a 
little hole in it there. So it is a vault. And unfortunately at the moment I can't see any inscription on it. But beautiful nonetheless. So as I was saying, um, this is just one of many places I'll be videoing here in Northern Ireland. I have a lot of these videos from the north coming up, so make sure you do check them out. Subscribe, hit the thumbs up and the notification bell so you don't miss out on this great cemetery adventure. Uh, this is a memory of his father. Um, it was erected by Alexander Lawson. In memory of his father, Alexander, who died in January 1842. Also his mother, Jane Lawson, who died in 1852. And we have a Mary McCleary, who died in 1828. Really nice one here, the railings around it. We have that beautiful urn on top. And this is sacred to the memory of Anne, wife of Robert Watson, who died the 1st of May, 1831, aged 49 years. Also of their children who died in infancy. Likewise, Isabella, his second wife, who died the 25th of May, 1840, aged 43 years old and the above named Robert himself who died in 1848 age 72 beautiful grave and of course on the side here then we have also the children of Francis and Mary Watson so we have uh, William who died in 1849 age 11 months Jane who died in 1854 age 11 months and Arthur Wesley Watson, who died October 1854, the same year, aged two years old. Martha Stewart died in 1870, age 11. William died in 1875, age 23. And then you have Francis, Robert, and a Thomas underneath that. So how sad to lose all those children in the 1800s. And I'm sure they had, you know, like, Cholera, maybe, a flu, fever, all those things took people's lives at an early age, unfortunately, back then. Another elaborate one here. And I actually think um, the stone work on top of this actually looks like a flame I thought it was a hand first but I think it's a flame now whether that represents the sacred heart you know the flame or the sacred heart I'm not sure but it's a little tomb style on top of it there and uh, there's no inscription on it Well, a beautiful resting place there and a headstone. There's a train gone by. So here is, this is erected by Ellen Brown in memory of her father, James Brown. What a name. Just like the famous James Brown, the soul singer who died the 29th of October, 1832, and his wife Mary died in November, 1832, and their family. So rest in peace to the Brown family. Quite 
We have a chest tomb design here. It kind of looks like this was um, done up a bit. It looks like there's modern blocks in there to keep it together. And that side, I don't know if that's the original side of that. It looks different. Maybe it is, but you can just kind of see where they've patched it up with cement just to keep it from falling apart. So they're really trying hard here to keep the place clean and tidy. And it's great to see places like this being saved. Um, for people like me and people like you who's watching these videos that we can experience the history and the beauty that's in these places. And it's truly wonderful really is and uh, i'm really enjoying my tour of northern ireland and what it has to offer amazing history and that story of poor old marjorie mccall who was buried twice We got to go and see her grave. But what a fright that was for her husband, John, to hear a knock on the door and your wife is standing there all bloody. What would you do if your husband or wife came knocking at the door and said, hi, honey, I'm home and you buried her a couple of hours ago. Oh, I can't imagine what I would think. It's a good job he didn't have an affair or meet a new woman. And Marjorie came knocking on the door thinking that she was dead. And poor old John was in there with a new woman and she comes knocking on the door. <laughs> oh, guys, it's just a thought. Just a thought. But this place is beautiful. And there's not much more to see in here. We've seen a lot of the more interesting ones. This is dedicated by Moses Douglas and to the memory of his beloved wife, Elizabeth, who departed this life. 21st of October 1853 aged 58 years and his daughter Catherine who was only 21 when she died in 1847 very very young very very young of course that's the Hewitt the Hewitt grave we were looking at there's a couple of tabletop ones there. This is to the memory of Eliza, wife to James Boyd of Lurgan, who departed this life in 1808. So guys, I think I'm going to wrap this one up. I'm heading on to the next location. Um, very, very interesting one. More mausoleums and stuff. And I will catch you on the next one. If you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. And follow me. And take you on a journey. Around the country. To all these wonderful places. So until the next one guys. Take care.